Hi, sleepyheads. My name is Travis, and you're watching Dev Tips. This is the for seventh the seventh video in a series called CSS Basics, and today is a special day because we're talking about CSS three. If you watch the other series I did called HTML5 Basics, you may recall that I described HTML's evolution and progression as a series of innovations followed by standardizations. CSS follows a very similar pattern. Now the first version, actually in CSS we call them levels. The first level of CSS was released to recommendation status in 1996. CSS2 was released in 1998, but it was a tumultuous time for the web. There were many browsers who were vying for market share dominance and not too concerned with standards compliance or an even enjoyable web. As a result of all that commotion, CSS2 was released and then later redacted and then released again. And the truth is, no web browser has ever fully implemented the full spec of CSS2, even today. But because of the fast-paced nature of the web, these specifications are often out of date even before they're published. CSS 2.1 was introduced in 2004, but only received full recommendation status in 2011. After that, the CSS Working Group outlined a new roadmap for the development of CSS, or in other words, began work on CSS3. One of the most interesting things about CSS3 is that it's not an enclosed full spec like the previous versions or levels were. CSS3 is published in modules. The word modules threw me off for a while in understanding what we're actually talking about. So to help you guys, you can think of it as like themes or grouping of ideas or maybe like chapters in a book. Publishing in modules allows for fast-paced reprioritization based on the needs of the web, uh, parallel development of different modules, and the ability to add new features or modules as needed. So now CSS, like HTML, can never really quite be done. So let's take a look at these modules. There are many, but here are a few of the most important ones. Selectors the box model, backgrounds and borders, text effects, transformations, and animations. Each of these modules could be an entire video series on their own. So my goal is not really to talk about every one, but make you aware of them and a little bit about what they do. Selectors! We've already had two videos in this series about selectors. Selectors are very important to CSS, but we've only touched pretty lightly on them. There are so many awesome bits out there for you guys to discover. I mean, you can do things like target a content that's in French, or target all of the elements that are only children of their parents, or even target elements that do not meet specific criteria. CSS is just so big. We need to have an entire talk about this, but the box model is how elements define their geometry on a page. So for example, like you know, the content boxes that they're in or the, the padding or the borders or the margins around and how they interact with each other. You can use new CSS properties to tell the browser to change how they calculate how big an element is, like literally like where they should start counting. Backgrounds and borders. New to CSS is the opportunity to use multiple backgrounds or gradients in backgrounds or to change the size of a background based on how big the container is or proportions of how big the background should be. Super handy, awesome stuff. Do -do 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 text effects. Crap like text shadows, white space wrapping, line breaking, alignments, justification. I mean, you can even choose the font that you want to use. When I started building internets, you had to choose from like five. There was five fonts, and if you didn't choose one of those five fonts, you got, you got uh, Times New Roman. Actually, that was one of the five, so you're choosing it anyway. Dude, webs are so much more awesome now. Transformations. You can transform objects with CSS. You can rotate, scale, skew, it's off the hook for real. You can even do all of these things in 3D space. 
CSS is amazing. Transitions and an an animations. You can now set a timing to how things change. For example, transition an opacity from zero to one over 500 milliseconds to make the appearance of something fading in. Make crap fly all about with predetermined multi-step keyframes and loops and all kinds of junk. I mean, uh, there is so much here. Oh, I'm getting I'm getting so worked up here, halfway because CSS is so cool, and also because of the crushing realization that even over seven videos, I really taught you very little about CSS. There's just it's just so large, it's such a massive scale. The things it can do and the interplay that each thing has to do with another. It, it's so big. So I look at these videos as not a tutorial or an in-depth treatise on the subject, but more for you guys an eye-opener on what's out there and what you should be looking at and playing with. So I really think the only way that you guys are going to learn to use HTML and CSS well is just to use it. Like, guys, make something. Make something today and tomorrow. And if you can, go back in time and make something yesterday because if you didn't, you're already a day behind. These videos are intended to give you context and help you learn what else is out there and show you what you should be learning. The best way to learn is really to make stuff. The only way to learn how to make stuff is to make stuff. Next week, we're gonna talk about something super exciting to me. It's called preprocessors. And then after that, I think we're going to close the CSS Basics video series. Thanks for watching, guys, and leave any questions you have in the comments. And to get you started, let me ask you guys a question. What was that one CSS aha moment where you kind of just, something clicked for you and you got it and you realized how big and powerful CSS is and how awesome it is? I'm really interested in your guys' experiences. Until next time, share this with your friends if you want to. I don't know. I don't care. Whatever. If you haven't yet, subscribe. That's cool too. Yeah, we're talking about coding websites, marking up a document, throwing down styles to make it look awesome. We don't care. Subscribe to DevTips right here.